Hey, fourth grade. We are here, and this week we're going to have a video with you every single day, so get excited for that. It is a fractions and decimal week, so we know that we spend a lot, a lot of time on fractions and decimals, so that's why there's a daily video. And you'll notice in your book that there's four total pages. So right now we want you to flip to fraction page eight. Yep, so we're skipping right over data. We'll do that next week. All right, so this is what your page looks like. Get ready for some writing. You're gonna have to pause the video probably frequently so that you can write these notes on your anchor charts um, because there's a lot of information and this is going to be really important for you next year. So let's start by zooming in to the part that talks about equivalent fractions. Probably the most important thing is what's right here and underlined. And on yours, we want you to take a marker and highlight it. Whatever you do the, to the top, you have to do it to the bottom to keep it equivalent. You wanna go ahead, Miss Moore? I'm sorry, I talked yeah. too much. All right, so if you're looking at the first picture that is split into thirds, two, two out of those is three is shaded in, so we write the numerator is two, denominator is three, so two thirds. And then when you cut each third in half again, we're now creating six. So it is equivalent because the same amount is represented. The piece of the pie or cake is just a different size. So you can see that with the picture, it's four, six. So two thirds is equal to four, six. And then if you think about slicing, it's the same thing as multiplying by two. So kind of checking to make sure that's right. Two times two is four and three times two is six. So that slice in half represents the multiplying by two. All right, and then in the other box, we have four examples. <laughs> Sorry. And really, we could have chosen any numbers to multiply by. Um, when, you, when you look at this as a fraction, if you're looking at 5 6, really the times 2 times 2, we know that 2 over 2 equals 1 whole. So you're basically multiplying it by a whole, which we know anytime you multiply anything by 1, it equals that same um, original factor. So for this one, we're really still just cutting it into smaller pieces. So when I multiply by two in the top and bottom, in the numerator and denominator, oh, surprise pop in guest, we have 10 twelfths. Um, we showed again that if you take that new fraction and multiply it by three, now we have 30, 36. And we can keep going forever and ever and ever. You can multiply it by any numbers as long as it's the same number in the top and bottom. For two thirds, again, we just multiplied by two. This was the, the same example as over here. So two thirds equals four six. We could have multiplied it by three. Two times three would have been six. Three times three would be nine. So um, six ninths would also be equivalent. Three fourths, again, we multiplied it by two to get six eighths. Then we wanted to show you multiplying it by two again to get 12 sixteenths. All three of those fractions are equivalent. And then one third, again, we multiplied by two in the numerator and denominator to get two sixths, and we could have kept going on and on and on if we wanted to. Awesome. Anything else with that? I think we're good. Now simplifying. All right, so simplifying fractions is where you put it in the simplest form. So GCF, remember that stands for greatest common factor. So you're thinking of the factors of the numbers. So the first example is three twelfths. We know that 12 divided by three is four, but you have to set that up in a fraction form. So you look at the factors of three and of 12. And if you were to do the factor rainbow for those, then the GCF for each of those would be three, but that's kind of one that we learned we could do in our head over time. Um, so three twelfths is equal to one fourth, again, because you divide the numerator three divided by three, the GCF, and that's one, and then 12 divided by three is four. So notice whatever you did to the top, you do to the bottom. And then the same thing below. So four twelfths, we know that 12 divided by four is three. So same thing for that one. Um, when you do a factor rainbow for four and 12, the GCF or greatest common factor is four. So therefore four twelfths in the simplest form is one third. Good, and then in the box over here, we just did another example so that you could see the factor rainbow. If we have nine fifteenths, um, again, we list out the factors for both. We see that the GCF or greatest common factor is three. So we divide by three in the top and in the bottom to get three fifths. 
Um, the only time you stop with simplifying is when both of your numbers um, can't be divided by anything else, when they don't have another greatest common factor. So if you use a factor to cut it down a little bit, you've got to make sure it's that largest number or you have to cut it again. Good. Yes. And then remember if the if you're doing like what Miss Patterson just said, if it's an even number, then it can still be divisible by two. So check check with that as well. Great. Yep. All right. Now comparing fractions. This one's a biggie. Um, so here are a couple of different strategies that we talked about this year. Um, and this is a lot of information. So you're going to have to pause it, copy it down, keep it in your notes because we know you're going to be using this in fifth grade. So there are a couple of rules um, for how to find fractions, um, which one's larger, which one's smaller. So if you look at this first box, common numerators. So we've drawn pictures here. Um, we both, we have a one in the numerator for one fourth and one tenth. So the rule for this one is the greater the denominator, the bigger the denominator, the smaller the fraction. Because if you're taking this equal size rectangle and cutting it into tenths instead of into fourths, that one tenth piece is way smaller than the one fourth piece. So the greater the denominator, the smaller the fraction. That works anytime you have a common numerator or the same number in the top. For common denominators, I'm gonna hide us real quick, Mrs. Moore. Um, if your denominator is the same, you have three fifths versus one fifth. Now I've got equal size rectangles. They're both cut into fifths. Um, so I can see that the numerator three of those fifths is larger than one fifth. So when the denominators are the same, the bigger the numerator, the greater the numerator, the greater the fraction, which brings us to kind of this bottom part. This is why we find a common denominator. Yes, so unlike everything, when you can't use either of those top two strategies, you kind of have to look at what you have. So we have, we're comparing two fifths and three fourths. The easiest thing, which y'all were kind of reluctant to do this at first when we taught you sometimes, is to find a common denominator. So all that means is basically what we were talking about with the simplifying fractions earlier. So you can see for, for the denominator, um, we have five and four, and you're listing the multiples of these numbers. So five, 10, 15, 20, four, eight, 12, 16, 20. So if you stop and circle the first two multiples that they have in common, that means that you can multiply the two denominators by that factor to get the same denominator. So that's lots of words, but all that means is Looking at the five, to get it to 20, you multiply by four. Whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top. So again, two times four is eight. So that's how we got eight twentieths. Um, and that's on the left, at least for me it is. Mm -hmm. And then if you're looking at the fours, well, you need it to be equivalent to 20. So this is where you have, you're not gonna multiply by four like you did for two fifths. Because if you multiply by four, it will not match. So you know four times five is 20. So if you do it to the bottom, you do it to the top. And then again, three times five is 15. So now you have 15 twentieths. The denominator is now the same. So the larger the piece, like explained in the top two um, strategies, is 15. Therefore, eight twentieths is less than 15 twentieths. Oh, I'm doing this one. So this one is kind of how we started out just to get our thinking about the size of the pieces. So using half as a benchmark. This doesn't always work, but you know you have all four strategies and comparing fractions was hard because you have to figure out which one fits for whatever um, two fractions you're comparing. So for this one, we know one fourth is less than a half because two fourths would be equal to a half, okay? So we write that down and then five six, well, that's one away from a whole because when your numerator and denominator is the same, it's equal to one whole. So if it said six six, that would be one whole, therefore five six is one away from a whole or greater than a half. So therefore, you know, five six is larger, so one fourth is less than five six. This is more. Could we have found a common denominator on that one just to double check? You definitely could have. And remember, so 
in class, worst case scenario, multiply both of the denominators together. Four times six is 24, write it over to the side and then figure out which factor gives you 24 for each of those numbers. The four would be times six, the six would be times four, and then you go from there, just like with the strategy that I showed you before, the one called Unlike Everything. Perfect. All right, here are your questions for today. So pause the video, take a minute to complete these, and we'll be right back with you. You can do it. All right, and here we go. Here are our answers. So on this, we mostly had to find those equivalent fractions. Um, so if you look at number one, which number sentence is true? Well, I looked through these and I noticed that in every single one, they were using three fourths and seven eighths. So if I just compared three fourths and seven eighths, I'd find my answer. So I um, found a common denominator. I knew that four was a factor of eight. So I just made my three fourths into six eighths and then I compared my numerators and I know seven is bigger than six. So seven eighths would be greater than six eighths, which is C. Awesome. And then for number two, you're kind of, you're given the answer and you're working back backwards. So this is a great example of when I want to use my answers to help me with the multiple choice. So if I plug them in, the one fifth and the one half, uh, that's just simply not going to work, right? So if we plug in three eighths equal to one third, I know eight and three, th eight does not have a factor of three. So then I finally get down to D, um, two six. And I'm kind of already noticed at the beginning that three was a factor of six. So if I write two six, and I multiply one third, remember whatever you do to the top, you do to the bottom. So one times two is two, so that's our numerator. And then three times two is six. And that's kind of just like what we showed you on the front. So multiplying it by two to create an equivalent fraction. And then Perfect. six, we also wrote that six is a multiple of three. So that kind of, my eye kind of went straight to that one even before I started working out the problem. Perfect. Okay, number three um, is just like number one. All the answer choices have the same fractions, only now it's in a word problem. So you're trying to figure out who drove the furthest. I think they're driving, yes, Steve or Tracy. Um, so I really am just taking my four fifths and my seven eighths. I need to think about multiples of eight and multiples of five. Um, and I thought it was easier this time just to multiply them together. And I think that is actually their least common multiple. So I did eight times five is 40 to find my denominator. And then I did five times eight is 40, four times eight is 32, eight times five is 40, seven times five is 35, and 35 is bigger than 32. So my answer would be B. Awesome. I mean, this reminds me how quick you have to be with your facts, like Ms. Mm -hmm. Patterson just was. So keep practicing if you're finding yourself getting a little slow at calling those out. All right, so four, we have a model, a picture. So use the models below. So the first thing when you have um, fractions represented in the models, you need to count your pieces and see what is represented. So on the top, I know that is split, or I'm sorry, I'm looking at the bottom first. On the bottom, I know it's cut into two. So two pieces or halves. So one half is shaded. And then if I'm going up, it's like when we taught you to draw the big rectangle and then split the pieces. Um, I can see that my one half was cut into thirds. So if that one half is three, then even though I can't see the other side, I know that must also be three. So that means three, six, is equal to one half. Um, so if you're looking, again, we're comparing fractions with models. The only letter choice that shows equivalent would be D, one half equals three six. And then notice we checked our work. So one times three is three, and then two times three is six. So that's the only one that works. And it's also shown in the picture. Perfect. Number five, I'm comparing one fourth and two fifths. Again, I'm finding a common denominator. Their least common multiple is four is for four and five is 20. So I multiply four by five, one by five, five by four, two by four, and I get five twentieths versus eight twentieths. I know eight is bigger than five. So my answer is D, one fourth is less than two fifths. 
Awesome. And then number six, you're like, what? This isn't really fractions, but dividing can be seen as fractions, right? So you're dividing 1,223 by four. We already reviewed how to do that strategy. So just use the long division. We saw so many awesome of the iMovie videos showing those um, and you were the teacher. So that was great. When you follow all the awesome steps and you're really careful, your answer is 305 and then you have a remainder three. Notice we checked our work, it matched up. We did not forget to add a remainder and our answer is correct. So that matches letter choice state. Great. All right. So the only other thing that's different about this week, um, because we're doing fractions and decimals all week long, we decided just to do one choice board full of fraction and decimal stuff. So it's just like what we've been doing, only now we're stretching it out over the whole week. So because of that, we would like for you Monday through Friday to complete four of these activities. Um, we found some really cool ones for this board um, and a lot of good practice. So take a look at the titles um, and really pick the skills that you think you need more practice with. So if you're struggling with improper fractions and mixed numbers, look here. We've got a couple of adding ones. Education Galaxy is different this time because you can click on any of the fraction skills. So I think in Education Galaxy it lists about seven. So pick whichever one you think you need to practice. You only have to complete one. Um, so there are some fun things here. We hope you have fun doing it. If you do one every single day, then it shouldn't take you very long. Um, and then you're going to put it into the Google form like you normally do. Awesome. Sounds good. Easy. Looks It'll fun. Be a good week. Anything else, Mrs. Yeah. Moore? That is it. Have a great time reviewing your fractions. Yes, have a good day, guys. And we will Hello. see you. Hi, Mrs. Moore. Soon. Hey. Bye.